This is the Retirement Key Podcast with Abe Abish, founder of Abish Financial Services. And I'm Heather Branch here with Abe asking for his insight on what you want to be working on now as you get closer to retirement, or perhaps you're already in the first few years of your retirement. Want to make sure that the plan you have in place is still the right plan to help you achieve the goals you have for what's hopefully going to be many decades of happiness in this next financial phase of your life. So visit us at theretirementkey.com to get started on that conversation with Abe and his team at Abish Financial Services. We also have links posted in the show notes or again, find us anytime at theretirementkey.com. As we're getting into the throes of it, sir, I mean, I do say the, the scary part is when I'm looking at my calendar, we're already talking about September. Summer is wrapping up. Q4 is a busy season for you. Flying by, flying mm-hmm. by, yeah. This is a great time for sports, too. You're talking, Ooh, yes. you know, Major League Baseball playoffs, college, college football, football's getting NFL started back up. starting. It is. Yeah, and then shortly after, even hockey and basketball, which I, I don't really follow those too much. Right. But, um, yeah, exciting time of year. And then things just seem to fly at this point in the year. You mm-hmm. know, summer is coming to an end. And yeah. um, we got the election coming up Oof. here shortly. You said the E word. How the E-word, dare yeah. you? I know. We're just talking about early voting and all those things. Yeah. And yeah, time flies at this point. It and, does. Uh, it, it's it's really nice here in the Northern Virginia, D.C. metro area too. fall. Fall is a oh, nice yeah. time of year. Favorite, yeah. favorite time of year. Obviously, lots of lots of things to do and look forward to. Thinking about taking advantage of the time, though. Let's talk about sure. that. Using our time sure. wisely, because I wanted to ask you, I didn't even realize this whole study that Vanguard put out. And it's a very interesting perspective. Because apparently it's one of the biggest mistakes people make when they leave their jobs. They take Mm -hmm. the initiative to roll their 401k over to an IRA. Awesome. Right. Good for you. First step, yes. But then they stop there. And what happens is that 401k lands into an IRA that can be in a market type cash account. And it only pays a marginal rate of interest compared to right. what you could earn from stock market gains. And so the study by Vanguard found that nearly a third of rollovers were still sitting in cash seven wow. years wow. later, Abe, missing those stock market gains. Here is mm. wealth manager Ed Murphy on Yahoo Finance. Unfortunately, it happens more often than it should. There's a couple of things that you can do to avoid it. One is you can stay in the plan. So mm-hmm. when you change jobs or retire, you don't necessarily have to take the money out and roll it to an IRA. Oftentimes, it's better to leave it in the plan and get the benefit of better pricing, oftentimes a, a diversified products that you can take advantage of. But to the extent that people do want to roll it over, it's really important that you consult with an advisor so that when you do roll it to another institution and you roll it into an IRA, the money doesn't sit there. It actually gets put to work based on what your investment objectives are. Okay, a couple of questions because he said it could be better mm-hmm. to leave it in the 401k, but I'm mm-hmm. worried about the kind of fees that you mm-hmm. might run into because your employer, right. you've been paying fees always, but the employer is going to take off what they might have been floating you some in fees there. So thinking about Correct. this situation, Abe, what could the cost be for somebody who makes this kind of mistake? And is this the kind of thing you can un- work to uncover? And we always talk about a second opinion, a review process that you do at Abish Financial. Is this the kind of thing you're looking for? Yeah. I mean, this happens all the time, Heather, where, you know, what I find happens maybe more often is that people accumulate old 401ks and old workplace plans. Yeah. Then, they, you know, especially in the contracting world with like defense contractors and things, which is huge sure. government contracting here in the D.C. metro area. And, you know, sometimes people hop from job to job because the contracts end, they'll start a new job, a new 401k. Mm-hmm. They'll be with an employer for a year or two, another one, three or four years, another one. And they can easily build up you know, three, five, seven, maybe even 10 accounts, including 401ks and TSPs, IRAs and all these things. Yeah. And as you can imagine, the more accounts you accumulate, the harder it is to keep track. And so we see that a lot. Uh, We have also seen what this gentleman described, you know, a rollover uh, taking place, Mm -hmm. money's going into an IRA, and then the account's forgotten about. And Mm -hmm. a couple comes in and says, you know what? Yeah, I uh, haven't done with anything with this money uh, since I rolled it over. And I've been, this is one of the reasons why we're here because the money's just sitting there and yeah. it's kind of dead, just sitting in cash, not losing anything, not making anything. And uh, we see that from time to time as well. And especially when you add in husband and wife, yeah. you can imagine you can accumulate a lot of money and a lot of accounts on your own. You add in another partner or spouse, and uh, oftentimes it's 10 or more accounts 
which is a lot to keep track of. And so mm. consolidation, bringing all these dollars and all these accounts into a well thought out, actionable phase two plan, mm -hmm. a plan that can help someone transition from their working career into retirement and then get through retirement successfully mm -hmm. is what we help people with here at Abish Financial, that phase two plan versus the phase one plan where you're in your working career and just accumulating and maxing out your accounts. Right. And so we just had a couple come into us from Woodbridge with uh, 1.6 million saved, a four on our risk scale. That means they are pretty conservative and they value principal protection, principal preservation, mm -hmm. reasonable growth versus an aggressive you know, investor looking for sure. nine, 10% returns or yeah. more. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're happy with not losing a lot and maybe mm -hmm. making, you know, four, five, six percent, something very reasonable, which mm -hmm. doesn't take a lot of risk to accomplish, right? Right, right. Uh, versus someone looking for a lot of return. Uh, what they found is, and what they already knew is they had accounts everywhere. Uh, the husband, especially, is a uh, electrician, has been part of uh, different unions, mm -hmm. uh, three or four, four one Ks, four one As, four different pensions, and he's like, you know, Abe, uh, one of the reasons why I'm here is because. And his wife is like five to seven years older. Okay. We need your help in making some of these pension decisions as sure. they come down the pike, which yeah. is basically the next 36 months. So in addition to managing the money, Abe, can you and your team help guide us on how to make these, uh, how to make the best pension decisions for right. my wife and I, because I want to get these decisions right. It's kind of like getting the social security decision right. Yeah. And so those were the problems for them. Uh, accounts everywhere dead money in cash, risky investments from 20 plus years ago, four pensions, not knowing how to decide on those pensions, and really not a clue on how to move forward and kind of stuck realizing they need uh, a partner. They need a Sherpa, right? Mm -hmm. Someone to guide them mm -hmm. into retirement and help them with all these decisions where there's not a lot of advice and guidance out there in the phase two retirement. There's tons of advice and guidance out there on how to invest and get to retirement not a lot on helping someone get through retirement successfully. And so uh, that solution for them was a consolidation, a well thought out consolidated plan, a phase two plan. Mm -hmm. And so if you're listening right now and you sound like this couple from Woodbridge and you say, you know what, Abe, my stuff is everywhere. Sometimes we call it a financial junk drawer mm -hmm. and there are accounts everywhere. There's pension decisions to be made, social security decisions to be made, insurance policies, life insurance. Do I keep that stuff? Yeah. Do I keep my yeah. long-term care? Do I buy long-term care? I mean, there's stuff everywhere, everywhere. for most people. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching and listening right now and you say, that's that's me, Abe, you know, my wife and I, my husband and I, my partner and I have accounts everywhere, decisions to make, insurance policies, all this stuff, that financial junk drawer. Yeah. We want it all consolidated, a well thought out phase two plan. Go to our website, theretirementkey.com. Click on the contact us tab at the top of the page and we can begin to have these same conversations with you about consolidation, 401ks, investments, pension decisions, all of it with you as well. We have links posted in the show notes as well. So you can just click there or again, visit us at theretirementkey.com. All right. Another economic situation, thinking about timeliness is where we are as far as our current climate, economically speaking. And I think that we've definitely talked about this here before, the idea of if you ask 10 different economists whether or not we're headed towards a recession, you're probably going to get 10 different answers. That just seems sure. it's all a matter of opinion for, sure. for a lot of situations. And there are some people who even look at data from unusual sources like sales of lipstick. We've even talked before about the men's underwear index. That's a real yeah. thing, apparently, yes. that can I be know. applied to to Things recession. are going good. You're buying those silk. Those it? silk <laughs> <laughs> when getting, they're not, you're buying the five pack. Right, you're buying, but you're getting that that label. You're buying the Ralph Lauren. You're not, yeah. you're not getting any in yeah. front of the loom. <laughs> right. <laughs> the Costco <laughs> brand. Uh, obviously, <laughs> it's all fun and games to talk about things like that. It's not what you take seriously when it comes to trying to figure out where we are economically speaking, Abe, but what are the tells that you look for and metrics that you follow that could have you saying to a client, it looks like we could be headed for a recession? Yeah, there are there are a bunch, Heather. I mean, there's some common ones that most people are aware of. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the VIX index, which really tracks volatility, things like yeah. that. Just a couple of weeks ago, that VIX index, um, a couple of weeks back when yeah. we were down big time in the market, then yeah. up, and since then we've recovered. Um, it spiked and hit its highest level since March of 2020. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, GDP contraction 
gross domestic product uh, going down, uh, lower industrial output, growing unemployment, classic yeah. inverted yield curve, which we have had for quite a while now, mm -hmm. which means that you can make more money and get more yield on a shorter term debt instrument or bond, you know, like a one to three month treasury bond or six month treasury bond more than you could on maybe a 10 year note, right. note to write 10 year bond or you know, 15, 20, 30 year. And that's typically a recession indicator as well. And so those are the things we look for. And and some of those warning signs have been out there. Um, and then you just also kind of look at common sense and you look at the markets have pretty much been straight up from 2008 to 20, really the top of 2022. We mm -hmm. had that correction when interest rates went up 11 times in 22 and 23. We've since then recovered. Okay. Well, going all the back, way back to 2008, I mean, the markets have been up pretty much for like 16 years, not yeah. straight, but close to it. Yeah, We have ridden that wave. People have hit all-time values in their retirement plans, more money than they've ever have, uh, have saved. The markets have hit all-time highs this year in 2024, I think over 30 different times, maybe 35 now. And what goes up must come down. And uh, if you're nearing retirement and you're hitting new values higher than you've ever had before, maybe now could be a fantastic time for you to kind of clip in these gains and take some chips off the table, if you will, and start to get a little more conservative, realizing you've done extremely well, which you probably have. So we just had a couple come in and call in from Clifton, Virginia, mm -hmm. um, just such a nice little neighborhood and mm -hmm. really town, um, just a kind of a treasure of a town in Northern Virginia yeah. uh, near Centerville. Retiring in five years, six and a half on our risk scale, just north of the middle of the road in terms of their investment risk profile and tolerance. Okay. But when they came in, they came in because they have three million. They've gotten to this point, uh, but they knew they were taking on more risk than they should be. And they're invested as if they're an 8.5, meaning of that three million yeah. in 401ks and IRAs, 85% of it's in stock. Mm which is a high amount, Yeah, 15% was in cash and bonds. Okay. Knowing they needed to get more conservative, knowing they needed to start putting all the pieces together, if mm -hmm. they were looking to retire in 60 months or less, no plan for phase two where all of this is consolidated and all these other things are planned for that are not planned for in phase one. Mm -hmm. I mean, what does it matter to you when you're 40 about Social Security, which right. when to take Social Security, right? You right. have 25 years ahead of you. What does it matter at age 40 to start planning for long-term care when you could have 50 years in front of you, right? Right, right. It's, it's better to maybe plan for those things in your 50s and 60s. Okay. And so the solution for them was a phase two plan, investment x-ray, second opinion on the investment analysis. How do you know right now, if you're listening, where you currently stand, how everything looks and appears, what the pros and cons are of what you have done for your retirement if it hasn't been tested recently? if it hasn't been analyzed and diagnosed. And so that's what they came in for, that recession proofing analysis and portfolio x-ray, mm -hmm. finding out where they stood today. And you are more than likely going to need to change things the closer and closer you get to retirement, All right, building in that growth and income, building in protection, preservation components, et cetera. So if you sound like this couple from Clifton, Virginia, and you say, you know, Abe, we've done really well also, we've saved several million bucks, We've known how to save it, accumulate it. We've been disciplined. We've gotten to three million as well, or less or more. But we don't know where to go from here. Mm -hmm. We don't know how much risk we should be taking. Mm -hmm. We've heard that we should be reducing risk. We just don't have a retirement plan. We have a growth and accumulation plan, but not a retirement plan. Mm -hmm. Go to the retirementkey.com. Click on the contact us tab at the top of the website, and we can begin to have these conversations about your investments as well. We also have links posted in the show notes. If it's more convenient, you can just click there to go to our website, which is again, theretirementkey.com. Thanks for listening to the Retirement Key Podcast with Abe Abish. To learn more about Abish Financial Services, visit retirementkeyradio.com. And join Abe for his radio show, The Retirement Key, Saturdays at 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. and Sundays at 8 a.m., 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. Investment advisory services offered through Abish Financial Wealth Management, LLC, number 310633, a registered investment advisor firm. Financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. To find out if Abraham Abish is licensed in your state, please call 571-577-9968. Abish Financial Services is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Abish Financial Services, Inc., Virginia Insurance License, number 127820. Thank you.